Hi, my name is Steve Redpath of Transuro Engineering, the Sitting Guild and EAL approved Electrotechnical Training Centre. This video is going to demonstrate how we carry out a prospective fault current measurement um, on the uh, installation we've got here. Uh, there's two measurements we have to take, the prospective earth fault current, in other words the current that would flow in the, in the event of a fault to earth between the line conductor and earth, and then we measure also the prospective short circuit current in the event there was a fault between line and neutral on a single phase system. Um, so we have here our multifunction tester and we're going to select our, um, in this case we're going to use an earth fault loop impedance tester to measure this uh, prospective fault current. We require with this particular instrument three leads to be connected and we're going to measure this fault current at the incoming supply. So the leads uh, are connected to the main earth terminal, or the earth bar there, and then across the incoming supplies to the main switch. <clears throat> In this case, when we're measuring these, we can uh, leave the installation isolated. So we select line and neutral with our probes, and with our meter, we first of all measure the prospective earth fault current. So we simply test on the incoming live supplies and that gives me a reading of approximately 370 amps. A relatively low current because we have quite a high impedance uh, coming into the installation. So that's our prospective earth fault current. We then select with our meter to measure the short circuit current. The connections remain the same, it's just we're measuring um, the uh, current on the different terminals. In this case we're measuring the current across the line to neutral. So we press again, uh, press the test, and this time we're measuring approximately 350 amps. So out of the two measurements, the 370 amps is the highest, and that's then recorded as the prospective fault current for this installation. We then have to check on the uh, protective devices, in this case these devices here, to see that the prospective fault current is less than the maximum braking capacity of our protective devices. And if we look on here, these devices are rated with a maximum braking capacity of 6,000 amps. So our, max, our prospective fault current was 370 amps, so it's well below these values, and therefore these um, protective devices are suitable for this installation. Uh, we would then record that figure on the um, schedule of test results that accompany the electrical installation certificate. So that completes the prospective fault current test. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of these uh, videos on inspection and testing procedures, please visit our website www.trans-euro.co.uk.